So, uh, so using some modern genetic technologies, we and many others uh, uh, have better characterized, I think, the diversity of breast cancers. And as Larry pointed out, it's not one disease, and it's, a, it's at least five different diseases. And we've given them various names, and these correspond with some of what we already knew about the estrogen receptor in HER2. Uh, but one of the new disease types, uh, which will subtype or the triple negative type is this uh, very aggressive type and we can actually see that the biology of this disease often changes depending on your race or your age or you know, maybe not the biology but the frequency changes with race and has age. From a, a, a screening perspective there was an interesting study which showed that uh, the basal-like group was m more frequent in, in interval cancers, um, right, which, which show up between uh, mammographic screenings. And that makes sense because this is a very rapid uh, uh, growing tumor type on average. So they just pop up, a a as Laura said. I don't think that has anything to do with neglect either. It's just the inherent and, and aggressive biology of, of these tumors. But, but, you know, the good news is now that we can see these different types more clearly than before, uh, uh, we need to target each type using the biology, uh, and that's precisely what's happened. Excellent. Chuck, Chuck thank you. We, in this trial that many people in this room are collaborating on, it's called the iSpy trial, we are studying uh, a group of young women who, or a, a group of women who are presented with larger cancers, and it turns out that well over half are under the age of 50, and we actually know that uh, 25 to 30 percent of these cancers are mammographically occult, meaning you can't find them on mammogram, and we will actually, maybe in about two weeks, be able to know what the biology is of these tumors that present, and I can tell you some of them are going to be very, the very basal type or the very, which are very angiogenic. They have a lot of macrophages and they have a lot of blood vessels and that's one of the things that MRI sees and that's one of the reasons why it's complementary because MRI uh, sees things because, uh, because, of, because there's a contrast agent we give when, if you've ever had an MRI, they inject you with a contrast agent and that agent escapes to the leaky vessels and that's what you see on um, the mammogram and it turns out that macrophages are also a marker of this uh, 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 a lot of the uh, tumors lighting up so uh, we actually are really excited about being able to correlate and tell us start to understand who are the people or what are the kind that may not be seen so well and then maybe that can be the catalyst for our finding new screening strategies for those groups of people at risk for those tumors. George. Uh, Chuck Baru said, I, breast cancer is no longer a disease. Based on what we know about the genetics of this disease, you should now think of this, in essence, as a group of criminals that happen to share the same boarding house. Okay? Some of them are petty thieves. Some of them are murderers. They, needed to be, they need to be apprehended in different ways. They need to be punished in different ways. And getting back to what we were saying earlier about targeted therapy, why this is so crucially important, why the new genetics is so crucially important, is that it will allow us in the future to avoid treating women with drugs that don't work, thereby avoiding the toxicity to, the, to those women, and will allow us to give the right drugs to the right people and cure their cancer. And this has been a huge sea change that's occurred literally within the last decade and which is, and which is set to totally revolutionize how we approach this disease over the next few years. 